So I take it you did not enjoy your Templar training? That's directed at me, I take it. Do you see any others about who have failed at their religious instruction? I didn't fail. I was recruited into the Grey Wardens. And if you had not been recruited, what would have happened instead? I would have turned into a drooling lunatic, slaughtered the Grand Cleric, and run through the streets of Denham in my small clothes, I guess. Your self-awareness does you credit. I thought you'd like that. We don't know what was said. You're a warden. I don't know if you killed King Kalen and make her forgive me, I don't care. But that bounty on your head could feed a lot of hungry bellies. Attack! We'll need the fight short. <laughs> Mighty timely arrival there, my friend. I'm much obliged. The name's Bodon Fedek, merchant and entrepreneur. This here is my son, Sandal. Say hello, my boy. Hello. Road's been mighty dangerous these days. Mind if I ask what brings you out here? Perhaps we're going the same way. Grey wounds. Hmm. My, that does rather explain a lot. No offense, but I suspect... There's more excitement on your path than my boy and I can handle. Allow me to bid you farewell and good fortune, sir. Goodbye. Now then, let's get this mess cleaned up, shall we? Bad dreams, huh? Well, it is real, sort of. You see, part of being a Grey Warden is being able to hear the Darkspawn. That's what your dream was, hearing them. The Archdemon, it talks to the Horde, and we feel it just as they do. That's why we know this is really a blight. I don't know if it's really a dragon, but it sure looks like one. But yes, that's the Archdemon. It takes a bit, but eventually you can block the dreams out. Some of the older Grey Wardens say they can understand the Archdemon a bit, but I sure can't. Anyhow, when I heard you thrashing around, I thought I should tell you. It was scary at first for me, too. That's what I'm here for. To deliver unpleasant news and witty one-liners. Anyhow, you're up now, right? Let's pull up camp and get a move on. Ah, it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fennec, at your service, once again. I saw your camp and thought to myself, what safer place to rest for the evening than in the camp of a Grey Warden? I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? I can see why you might be suspicious, being a Grey Warden and all. Were I in your shoes, I would feel the same way. Trust me when I say that my encountering you here was serendipity and nothing more. I travel a lot, so I'm bound to meet everyone on the road eventually. If you prefer, I'll take my boy and be on my way. But regretfully, you're the safest spot on this road, without a doubt. Anything, everything, but all of the finest quality. No cheap trinkets here. And my boy Sandal happens to be a bit of a hand with enchantments. Oh, yes. Sadly, it also makes us a target for bandits and the like. 
If there were spare hands to hire as guards, I would have done so long ago. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. If there's anything I can do for you, please, please tell me. Hmm. I suppose since you told me about you being a Grey Warden, it's only fitting for me to be as open. I am originally from Orzammar, the famed dwarven city that lies beneath the stately Frostback Mountains. I was a merchant there, too. Merchant cast. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. Our kingdoms once spanned the length of Thedos, from majestic Orzammar to Kalsharok to glittering Darmalin far to the west. They say the gold and silver veins ran so thick through the stone of Darmalin that the entire city sparkled. The Darkspun took it all, of course. One by one, the old tigers fell, and then all that was left was Orzammar. But we were talking about how I ended up here, weren't we? One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in his cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. No balls. They're touchy like that. Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I had been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The lost tides. They're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. That's exactly how I see it. The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never looked back. I thank the stone every single day. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? Ah, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerim, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here. I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think. And he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. It may not be my blood, true, but I think of him as one. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. Maybe one day we'll see it again. It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boys are natural, working with enchantments. He might have even been leery maddled. I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. Enchantment! <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it, at least. Look, we... We don't rob people, all right? We don't take things from people that need them. The things in the Lost Tigers, what good did they do lying there? I brought them back to Orzammar, where people could look at them and remember. It's not all that different up here. There are places long abandoned by the humans everywhere. Even more now with the Darkspawn coming. People flee from the Blight with good reason, but they forget things. Things with value and meaning. They leave them behind because they're frightened and desperate. And sometimes, my boy and I, we find our way to these places before the Horde descends, and we save these things. I take them away so the Darkspawn don't get them. Is that so bad? They destroy everything they touch. No, of course not. And when it ends, I will go back to finding ruins, or move on. I don't really have much of a choice. 
Some folks aren't happy about Tian Logain being named Regent. There are rumors he had something to do with the King's death. Isn't that the most ridiculous thing you ever heard? The Darkspawn killed him, sure enough. If Tian Logain couldn't save the King from that inn, then nobody could. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Of course. Good fortune to you and yours. Goodbye. You are not quite as callow as I thought. That is... unexpected. Callow? It is a word in your tongue. It means without feathers, as a new-hatched bird. Then why ask? You probably give most people that impression. You'll get over it, eventually. I was sent to be the eyes of the Antom. The Arishok asked what is the Blight. By his curiosity, I am now here. The one who commands the Antom, the body of the Kunari. Kunari have no kings. Why do you? So if this blight were in Orlais, it could consume the land with impunity. Don't strain yourself pondering that. I do not know why the Arishok sent us. He commands and I go. A portion of it. Were you not at Ostagar when the army was overwhelmed? That is your answer. Yes. I cannot go home. It doesn't matter now. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. Speak then. Then I suggest we move on. Does it matter? Very well. I caged myself. A weak mind is a deadly foe, as you are no doubt aware. I came to your lands with seven of the Beresad, my brothers, to seek answers about the Blight. We made our way across the Ferelden countryside without incident, seeing nothing of the threat we were sent to observe. Until the night we camped by Lake Kalanhad. They came from everywhere. The earth beneath our feet, the air above us. Our own shadows harbored the Darkspawn. I saw the last of the creatures cut down, too late. I fell. I am told no others survived. I don't know how long I lay on the battlefield among the dead, nor do I know how the farmers found me. I only know that when I woke I was no longer among my brothers, and my sword was gone from my hand. Perhaps. I searched for it, and when that failed I asked my rescuers what had become of it. I killed them. With my bare hands. I did. I knew they didn't have the blade. They had no reason to lie to me. I panicked. Unthinking, I struck them down. Do your people have no souls as we know them? Convenient for you. That sword was made for my hand alone. I have carried it from the day I was set into the Beresad. I was to die wielding it for my people. Even if I could cross Ferelden and Tevinter, unarmed and alone, to bring my report to the Arishok, I would be slain on sight by the Antam. They would know me as Solas, a deserter. No soldier would cast aside his blade while he drew breath. If I knew where to look, it would be in my hand now. Near Lake Kalanhad. Perhaps those words are empty, but... Thank you all the same. Did you always live in an alienage? Was it very terrible? I have never been to the Denerim alienage, but I hear that life is hard and there is so much squalor. In Orlais, most Alvin servants live in the homes of their masters, often in great wealth and luxury. They are serfs. There is no slavery in Orlais. Elven servants are well compensated for their services. Some of them live richer lives than humans. A well-trained elven servant is highly valued in Orlais. They are nimble and dexterous, and many people find them pleasing to look at. 
No, I did not mean it that way. Oh, my words were clumsily chosen. I did not mean to offend. I... I am sorry. Thank you. You have given me a lot to think about. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the Maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. In my dream I fell, or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? That is why you are a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. What is meant by someone like me? And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering Cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, they were forbidden, and forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? My fruit? Well, it is not technically forbidden, but, but it's not freely given either. Not everyone gets a bite. I can't believe I'm having this conversation. <clears throat> but no, I did not take vows. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. I was a traveling minstrel in Orlé. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orle ruled. When Orle was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orle. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orle and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. <coughs> Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecilie let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecilie than my mother. Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. She kept dried flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orle. But enough about that. Let us move on. Something on your mind? Of course. Essentially, they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. Perhaps, but there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given Lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. 
which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the Lyrium trade with the Dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. Thankfully, no. You only start receiving Lyrium once you've taken your vows. You don't need Lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away, either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. Oh, why you little... Your furry friend here took offense at me getting near his food. He snapped at me, look. Sometimes I forget that he's a war dog. That'll teach me. Never, never what? Had a good pair of shoes? Oh, so that's what we're talking about. <laughs> well, if you really want to know, you tell me first. I myself have also never done it. That. Not that I haven't thought about it, of course, but, you know. Well, living in the Chantry is it's not exactly a life for rambunctious boys. They, they raised me to be a gentleman. That's not so bad, is it? I've uh, no urge to rush into anything. We, we may not even survive what is to come after all. Enough. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Let's go. Did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. Well, if you're going to go and pay attention to the facts, then fine, fine. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard. And before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle who died when I was very young. Arleman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. Arleman eventually married a young woman from Orlais, which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care. She did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age 10. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. Maybe. She felt threatened by my presence. I can see that now. I can't say I blame her. She wondered if the rumors were true herself, I bet. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. I think so, yes. This news we've heard about him being sick disturbs me, though. I wonder if we won't discover that Loghain has come to the same conclusion as we have. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. <laughs>